the goal, to come to terms with who we officials are, what we do, how we do it, and our accountability for it. Long has that been a holy grail in our collective endeavor. It is a reasonable goal. We might think progress has been made in reaching answers to the questions implicit above, but I think not really. Much of what we know about officials and officiating is based on anecdotal evidence. We work, they watch, evaluation systems are activated, and opinions are formed. To bastardize the old saw from the art world, I might not know much about good officiating, but I know it when I see it. So much of what we do is in the practice of what we do. Officiating is a hands-on, pragmatic undertaking. It has to be based upon what researchers call declarative knowledge, knowing the rules, and on the implementation of that knowledge called procedural knowledge, or the how-to part of this. The easy part to solve is determining rules knowledge. The hard part is everything else. Over the years, officiating has sparingly been the subject of isolated research. To this day, there is not a solid body of juried research about sports officials. Compare that to volumes on athletes and athletic performance or to coaching. The difference is stark and it leads to the question, why? This past month, a book on officiating, authored by an international array of authors, was published. A review copy landed on my desk. The lead author is Claire McMahon, head of sports science at Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne, Australia. Claire delivered the keynote address for NESO's 2009 Sports Officiating Summit in Tucson, Arizona. Her author team includes four sports psychologists and a human movement scientist. Australia, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom are all represented by that group. The book is titled, Sports Officials and Officiating, Science in Practice. It is a rather small book, just 162 pages, but it reads big and it reads hard. It took perusing more than once. At one point, I felt I was back at the University of Wisconsin prepping for an exam. The book is by researchers for researchers. It hopes to be the basis for further much needed research. I commend the authors. The thoughts in many cases are profound and they are presented with profundity. You have to dig. The digging unearths the reality of officiating as we have pretty much come to know it. But the digging brings unique clarity into view. In the section on visual perception, we are treated to the following. Paying attention to the relevant information without being distracted by the irrelevant information is one of the key components of perception in officiating. But well, we have known that, but that statement is memorable and it's teachable. Interaction and game management are covered in the book. In that section, we learn that research has proven that elite, top-rated officials seem to have the ability to see what is thrown at them and adjust accordingly. Really good referees are adaptable. Of course, Communication would come under scrutiny in such a book. Two insights offered were these. The most important part of the communication chain is the receiver, the player or the coach, for example. And the clarity of an official's explanation can outweigh the accuracy of the decision when players slash coaches rate us as being fair or not. Let me close with what the researchers determined to be key psychological characteristics for officials. We have to be committed and organized. We have to be able to remove distractions. We have to be realistic about our performance. We have to have a goodly measure of robust self-belief. I think that last characteristic is a nice turn of phrase, but it didn't take a village to figure that out. Thank you.